Huh. Do you think anybody's going to watch tonight? I think a few people will come on. I think some people will watch at another time. Oh boy, I hope so. Hey, how was your dead box, Steve? I think it's pretty good. I was on a Zoom meeting all day. Boring. Oh, uh, guys, we're live. Did you know that? We're live? Oh, Phil, I'm sorry. We were just, <laughs> just shooting the breeze, killing time. <laughs> All right. Come on, let's get it together. We got things to do here. People want to hear about Fatima, Eugene. Okay. Five, four, three, two, one. Here we go. Action! <laughs> Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Tabernacle Tuesdays with Eugene where we're going to learn about the saints. Oh boy, I always like this, because I get a chance to ask questions and to tell people about one of the saints. Yes, Eugene, we do, and we're here at EMACT Ministries, and we're happy that you're all here to learn a little bit about tonight's special saint. Who's it going to be? I can't wait. Well, this one is very special, of course. It's more than a saint. This is Our Lady, the Blessed Mother. We're going to talk about Mary? Mm-hmm. Eugene, we're going to talk about Mary tonight. And so we're going to tell everybody about Our Lady's apparition in Fatima uh, over a hundred years ago. Oh, yeah. That's pretty special. The reason why we're doing it is because May 13th would mark the 103rd anniversary of the uh, Fatima apparition of Our Lady's appearance in Portugal. That was a really cool story. So let's get on it. Okay. Well, Eugene, Our Lady has appeared, Our Blessed Mother has appeared in many places throughout the whole world over the course of the centuries. Ever since the start of the early church, she still comes around now and then? She's with us always, Eugene, and she's present in the world. She's present as our mother, our helper, and our guide. So, whenever she appears somewhere, she tells us how to be better and how to follow her son Jesus more. Exactly. So, do you know some places that she has appeared? Well, she appeared in Fatima. She appeared to the three children, that's what we're going to talk about. She did. She also appeared in France, and some people in the audience will remember Our Lady of Lourdes. And she also appeared in, in Mexico. Oh yeah, that story about Juan Diego, and how she appeared in Mexico City. Our Lady of Guadalupe. Mm -hmm. So she has appeared in different places. As a matter of fact, I'm proud that she appeared in Ireland, in Knock. Uh, a couple of hundred years ago for the people of Ireland. So Our Lady does come around and she appears to give us a message. Well, what message did she give from Fatima? Well, that's a good place to start because I want to tell everybody the whole story. But, but basically, the message was, was very clear, Eugene. Well? Well, I mean, have, have more faith. I mean, grow in faith and pray, because the world needs conversion. We all need conversion. Mm -hmm. Pray the rosary. She said that? Matter of fact, she appeared holding the rosary, which was really, really beautiful, that Our Lady appeared, and she was holding the rosary as she appeared. And she told the children to pray the rosary often. What else? Well, when, when Our Lady appeared in Fatima, she actually uh, showed the kids that hell was true and that some people would have to go to purgatory and be purified before they got into the gates of heaven. That must have been scary. That's right, and that's part of the apparition. So, conversion, pray the rosary, especially for the world, and um, hell is real and some people go to purgatory. So. We want to avoid purgatory by being very, very good and staying close to Our Lady and avoiding sin. What else? Well, when, when Mary appeared, she said uh, to the children, make sure you consecrate the whole world, yourselves and the world, to my immaculate heart. She wants us to, like, love her more? Mm-hmm. 
She wants us to love her more and she wants us to give ourselves completely to her heart. So she used the term consecrate yourself and consecrate the world to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. And if we do that? She said if we do that, if we consecrate ourselves to the Immaculate Heart of Mary, then there would be conversion, especially in places like Russia, which needed conversion. Yeah, we were talking about those communists. Okay, so let's get on. Eugene, uh, the story of Our Lady of Fatima is basically the story about uh, Mary, the Mother of God, appearing to three peasant children in Portugal in 1917. What were the name of the kids? I think you can remember. There were three children and they were young. Lucia Santos, she was age 10 when the apparitions began. She's the one that became Sister Lucy. Right, she lived to an old age. And then there were two other siblings, her cousins. So there was Lucy, age 10, and then there was Francisco, Marto, and his sister Jacinta, Marto. And uh, Francisco was age 9, and Jacinta was age 7. They were just little ones, huh? So what happened? Well, again, these three children were shepherds, and so they would spend their time um, taking care of the, the sheep that were um, belonging to Lucy's father and mother. And since Jacinta and Francisco were Lucy's cousins, they all hung out together. Just three kids playing in the field, watching sheep. And that's when those miraculous, miraculous apparitions happened. And at the end of the story, I'm going to tell you something kind of sad. Uh, Francisco and Jacinta died at a young age. They did? Yeah, yeah, I remember you said that. Mm -hmm. And you know what they died of? They died of an influenza. Something very similar, like a flu that hit Europe at that time. That was the famous... Spanish flu of 1918. Right, and so it actually took the life of little Francisco and little Jacinta. Did they go to heaven? Yes, they did. And Lucy, of course, they did. and they were canonized saints, and that's at the end of the story, I can tell you that. They both were canonized. And Lucy lived a very long life. As a matter of fact, Lucy lasted all the way to... 1980-something? No to 2005. So Lucy was basically uh, almost like 100 years old, and she lived 75 years in a convent as a sister. Wow, so what, what else about this whole story? Well, the whole story is very interesting because Our Lady appeared to the children over six times, and each time she appeared to them, she revealed a little something to them about the way that all of us could become holy and uh, we could make the world a better place and also stay free from the temptations of sin. So it appeared six times. What day of the month? She appeared, very good question by the way. She appeared six times and it was always on the 13th. That's an unlucky number. No, it isn't. It's a blessed number. She appeared on May 13th. June 13th, July 13th, August 13th, there was a bit of a problem, I'll get to that. And then uh, September and October, there was a great miracle on October 13th. So, go ahead. All right, here we go. Let's start it off anyway. You promised to tell me the whole truth and nothing but the truth? I promised to tell you the whole story exactly as I remembered and studied it so that we could all learn it. Okay, so the beginning of the story actually starts in 1916. A year early? Mm -hmm. A year before Our Lady appears, the children are playing in the field, as usual, and they are cruising through their prayers. When they said the rosary, they were cutting it real close and saying it very quickly and missing parts. Yeah, but that's a long prayer for kids. I know, but they, they, they were taking a little too shortcuts anyway. It was funny that uh, at that time, at Lucy's property, where the, the sheep were, there was a cove, and at that cove, an angel appeared to them. An angel? Like Gabriel? Yeah, like a, uh, the guardian angel. He called himself the guardian angel of Portugal. And that angel said, prepare yourself, 
because uh, God has something special to reveal to you children. What else did the angel tell them? The angel told them, hey, you guys, you've got to pray. So as you play, you also need to pray because children need to do both and to get into good habits of prayer and to stop taking shortcuts with that rosary. Did they? Yes, the angel told them a beautiful prayer. He said, say this, my God, I believe in you. I adore you. I hope in you. I love you. Pardon me and forgive all those who don't believe in you. That's like a nice prayer. The angel told them to say that prayer and for a whole year they said that prayer. The angel appeared to them a second time briefly while they had the time with the sheep in 1916 and told them to pray better. And then finally, in the fall of 1916, the angel appeared one more time and said, get ready you kids because God is going to reveal something very special to you. And did they get ready? They did. They prepared themselves with prayer and they prayed harder and they were good and they avoided sin and the angel told them to say a prayer to ask the Father to give forgiveness of the sins because of the world because this, the world was sinning pretty, pretty bad back in 1916, 1917. What was the context? Well, Eugene, there was World War I going on, and so there was millions of people dying in the trenches all throughout France and in Europe. And second of all, there was, uh, I don't know, some people were fighting against the church and God, especially in Europe. They felt like they were pressed down, so now they started going against the church and being very mean. So they were skipping mass. Well, some were. Some were skipping mass, but more than that, there was a um, sort of a, an anti-religious sentiment going on by many governments, even in Portugal, where the children were. So? So that was 1916. An angel appeared three times. Then what? Well then, we go to May 13th, 1917. And once again, the children are in the field that Lucy's dad owned. And they were at the Cova. And once again, they were playing games and they were praying. Then? Then a light came. It looked like lightning. What did they do? Lucy said, let's get out of here. Get the sheep. It's about to leave. So they started gathering the sheep. But then from that light, lightning bolt, they saw a strange glow and a wind. And then a beautiful lady appeared before them. She was right by an oak tree that was in the cove. What did the lady look like? Well, she looked a lot like what's right behind you. She wore a white garment and she had a rosary between her arms, draped over her arms. What else? Well, she had, um, she had a beautiful uh, gold uh, trim on the top and she was glowing, she was radiant. And the, the kids never saw a, a woman like that in Fatima before. And they weren't sure what, what to think. What did she say to them? Well, they asked her. They said, um, like, who are you? And she said, um, I am the Blessed Mother. And uh, I am here. Uh, and, I, and I want you to come back. I want you to keep coming here. And I will appear to you again. How many times? She said, she said, she said, right from the start, on the first apparition, I'm going to come on the 13th of each month. And in that time, I'll tell you a little bit more to help you and to help the world to change its ways and to get away from sin. What else? Well, she said, don't be afraid. She said, don't be afraid. And she said, pray the rosary. That's why she was holding the rosary in her hand. Yes. She identified herself very clearly in the last apparition as Our Lady of the Rosary, and she was holding the rosary each and every apparition on the 13th of the month. And she told the children to pray the rosary. Anything else? Well, she told them that, um, listen kids, uh, some people um, are going to go to purgatory. And some people might even go to hell. 
And so, you know, you have to get ready because all of us have to face God one day. Oh, scary stuff. Yeah, there was a few scary stuff in the apparition. But I, I, I got to tell the audience, Eugene, that um, Lucy said, hey, listen, um, when are we going to get to go to heaven? And Our Lady told the kids right away on the first apparition that Jacinta and Francisco would go to heaven soon, but that Lucy would live a long life. So she predicted it. She did. So she also told Francisco, be a good boy and pray a lot so you don't go to purgatory. So that got him straight. And Jacinta, she was a good girl. So they went home and they told the story after Our Lady disappeared. They went home and told the story to their family. And I guess their parents were very proud of them. <laughs> no. Could you imagine, even if you told me that you were walking here at the Marian Shrine and that Our Lady appeared to you, I might be like, are you okay, Eugene? Are you sure you didn't imagine it? But the, you mean to tell me the parents didn't believe them? The parents were questionable. Now, it's funny because Lucy's mom was quite annoyed. The word got out because Jacinta and Francisco's brothers and sisters started blabbing throughout the whole village that, you know, that, that, that my, look, my, my little sister and my brother saw the Blessed Mother. So everybody started talking. And did people believe? No, people were saying, they, oh, look, those kids are crazy. And then Lucy's mother got so mad, she said, why did you make up this story? Did she hit her? Actually, she... <laughs> She beat her on the first day and said, don't you be making up any lies. Did anybody believe him? It's funny, Jacinta and Francisco's dad, Mr. Marto, he did believe them because he said, my children wouldn't lie. So when they went up to the parish priest to question him, Mr. Marto, he said, I tell you what, there's something to this. My kids would not lie. Wow, so a whole month in the village where people said, you guys are liars and fibbing. Yeah, the whole month of May 1917 into June, a lot of people questioned the kids and said, these kids are crazy. They are lunatics. Then, June 13th, what happened? A handful of people came out with them that day. I'm just, just a handful. I mean, 20 or 30 or 40, just kind of hanging around to see if there's anything going to happen. And sure enough, at a certain point, the children knelt down, prayed the rosary, and then they went into like an ecstasy again, where they saw Our Lady. They, they didn't move? They, when, whenever, they, whenever they got into this apparition, they did not move. They were like, I don't know, they were in a trance. As a matter of fact, nothing could disturb them. Even if someone banged a loud noise or somebody shouted, they couldn't even hear them. And then Our Lady appeared in June on the oak tree. What did she say again? She said to them, pray the rosary. You see, that's a common theme. And she said that, Lucy, your task in life is going to be to promote devotion to my Immaculate Heart to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Wow, so what else? Well, basically simple, the June apparition. Um, the children saw Mary's heart. Like they, all of a sudden, like, like right in the middle of the dress there, they could see like a heart. And the heart was burning with love, but on the heart there were thorns. Why were there thorns? because it was also that Mary suffers because of sin. And so, you know, her heart hurts when we sin. And that's part of the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Give your heart to Mary for the reparation of the sins of the world. Then what happened? Then another month went by. Were people still doubting the kids? Half the village said the kids were liars and lunatics. But half the people in the village said there might be something to this, you never know. So then July 13th. July 13th, the pressure was mounting for Lucy. There were so many people, Eugene, saying, Lucy, you're a liar and the devil showed you this, that Lucy almost did not go in July. 
She was down with herself. She was like, everyone's telling you a different story and you don't know what to believe. Sometimes it's hard to discern, you know, uh, what the truth is. But, but Lucy knew in her heart and Jacinta and Francisco knew that Our Lady was there. So no matter how many people called them a liar or made fun of them, they stayed with the story and Lucy toughened up. Lucy must have been tough on her because her mother even was really mad at her. And the mother oh, just started to soften up a little bit after July because the crowd was very thick this time. How many? A couple of thousand. So now there's 2,000 people there in July uh, on the 13th to see what's going on. And what did our lady say this time? She said to them, say the rosary. She always says that. Yep. Pray the rosary every day. And then the kids asked, they said, hey, Our Lady, there's a lot of people here who doubt us. And Our Lady said, you know, I told you, you would have to suffer that there were gonna be misunderstandings here. And then the kids said, um, could you make a big miracle on one of these uh, 13, month of the 13th, this way everyone could come to believe. And did she say she was gonna do it? She did. She said, on the last time, on October, on the 13th, I'll make a big miracle so that people will believe you. But in the meantime, she kept on saying that important message about say the rosary, pray for conversion. Anything else for that July? Yeah. She showed the kids a vision of hell. <laughs> That's scary. She did, and it was scary. And the children didn't seem to be that upset, but they definitely remembered it. Sister Lucy later on when she was a nun said it was a terrible thing to see a vision of hell and what it looked like. And that there were souls there that were suffering and there were demons. So it was quite scary, but uh, Mary also said that my immaculate heart will triumph in the end. And? And it. If we trust in Mary and go to Jesus, and Jesus gives us his grace and salvation, all the hell can be avoided for all people. Uh, so there was something beautiful there. Didn't she say something like, add a special prayer to the rosary? She did. And, and very good, by the way, Eugene. That in, in July, in the apparition, she said, when you finish your, you know, your decade of the rosary, you got your Our Father. And then your ten Hail Marys. And then you do the... Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Then she said, children, I'd like you to add a little prayer. And the prayer goes like this. O my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell. Lead all souls to heaven, especially those most in need of thy mercy. Yeah, we say that when we do the rosary. And that prayer came in Fatima, that prayer. So people were wondering, where did that prayer come from? That's the, the, uh, the Fatima prayer that the children told, uh, told us that Our Lady said, add to the end of the rosary. So that was basically it for July. Then what? How did August go? August was a disaster. What? The kids did not get to show up on the 13th of August. But they were told to show up on the 13th. What happened? They forgot to set their alarm clock? <laughs> no. It was a crazy story. All right? Pressure was mounting. And so uh, a crowd of 18,000 appeared on August 13th. But the kids didn't show up. What happened? The night before, on the 12th, the, the mayor of the town, the administrator of the district, came in his car, grabbed the kids, and took them away to a nearby city and put them in a jail. They got locked up? For what? He, the, the mayor was saying, like, you know, you're just doing this to make more people religious, and so more people would be Catholic and Christian, and the mayor was against the church. So he locked up a couple of innocent kids? Yes, he did. On the 13th of August, he locked them up for three days. What did he do? 
Well, their parents came and tried to get them out and the mayor wouldn't budge and he kept them there for three days, the 12th, the 13th, the 14th. And at one point he was very, very mean. Did he torture them? No, he didn't torture them, but he, he, he really was cruel because he said, um, he took them each individually into a room and said, I'm gonna bring you down in the basement and boil you with hot oil if you don't tell the truth. Now, this is all a lie, isn't it? Did the kids back out? Did they, did they crack under pressure? The kids did not. The kids were willing to be martyrs. Matter of fact, little Jacinta was so brave. She's like, I'm telling the truth. So if you bring me down to the basement and you put me in hot oil, I don't care because I'm gonna go to heaven. So she was firm. Was Lucy and, and Francisco the same way? They all stood by and said, no matter what you do to us, we're not going to back out. Our story is true. Hmm, that was a mean man. Mm-hmm. The children were released. They went back to the village. At one point, they gathered around. They went up, and Our Lady appeared to them briefly on the 19th. That's like six days late. And she said, look, I know you couldn't make it on the 13th, but uh, don't worry. I'm going to make that miracle. And I told you kids that you know, if you stand with me, uh, the people are gonna be, you know, give you a hard time, and there's gonna be suffering. So, what happened in September? September, ah, it was the fifth apparition, and now the crowd was getting really big. Let me guess, 5,000. No, 10,000. So now 10,000 people. Did they advertise this? No, word of mouth, got out. People from Portugal came, people even from Spain. Uh, there was a couple of journalists there in September and the children were prayerful. And I think the whole thing backfired on the, on the mayor. Yeah, the mayor was trying to stop it. And now, because he, he basically put the kids in prison, now even more people are coming. And that's true. So, in September, the crowd was thick. Our Lady said once again, Pray the Rosary. Exactly. And then uh, Our Lady said to the, the kids that, um, she said, I know that the people are demanding miracles and I know you want a miracle. So we'll have one next month. In the meantime though, uh, some of the people were being a, a little bit rude, the 10,000. What do you mean rude? Some of them are grabbing the kids and going, uh, you have to heal my son. You have to tell her to heal my son. And so they were getting all hyped up. It was kind of crazy. But, um, but in September, I guess basically, um, the message was uh, pray the rosary and next month, yes, we'll have a big miracle. What would the miracle be? She didn't say for sure. She did say, by the way, that she said, I'll be here next month. And you know what? You'll see St. Joseph and you'll also see my son, Jesus. Did everybody see that? Well, I'll get to that, okay? So basically the whole month of September finishes and now it's October. People were really excited by now. I hope she came. She promised a miracle. She did promise a miracle and I'll tell you what, on October 13th, 1917, it was a rainy, rainy night the night before. I mean, it poured rain. That made quite a mess, huh? Could they get a rain date? No, people came, people came, and they stayed out in the rain all night. How many? The estimated crowd was 100,000. Some people said it might have only been 70,000, but there was people all over the place. And found it was like a small village. It was muddy. It was rainy. It was cold. Were some of the people unhappy? A few people said, those kids better be telling the truth. Because if I came out here in this rain and almost got pneumonia, all because they're lying, I'm going to be very mad. Uh oh Yep, but anyway, the children made their way to the cova amidst the great crowd. They barely got through. The streets were lined and up the path to the shepherd's place where Our Lady appeared. 
And then the people were going, come on, we want a miracle. Man, those people were nasty. I know, they should have just been just, you know, calm, but they were like, we want a miracle. And so the, 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 the miracle did happen, that all of a sudden the children went into their usual prayer and then they went into their ecstasy. And then, did she come through? She did. She told them in this final thing uh, a couple of things first. One is, please erect a chapel here, right, on this site uh, uh, for the future, because this is the last time I'm going to be appearing to you guys. What else? Oh, why not? Pray the rosary. She said, pray the rosary. But a lot of times the rosary is like repetitious. I know, but it's powerful. Don't you think she came every time and said, pray the rosary? It is powerful. So on October 13th, one of her last messages was, pray the rosary. What else? Well, she said that, um, she said that, okay, it's, it's, it's time. It's time, children. Now, um, you know, consecrate yourselves to the Immaculate Heart of Mary, Jacinta and Francisco, I'll see you guys soon in heaven. And Lucy, you got a task to do. Your whole life is to promote devotion to the Immaculate Heart. And she said, now I'm gonna make the miracle. I'm dying to know, what was it? I think a lot of our viewers remember. The sun, well, first of all, the rain stopped and it was pouring the whole time. I mean pouring, muddy, cold, and pouring. Then the rain stopped. And that's it? And then the sun in the sky started to become very, very bright and very, very warm. That's nice. Like a nice sunny day. No, more than that. It actually danced in the sky. It circled around three times and it changed color. And then everything, everything on earth started changing color in that area. For real? Yeah, and then, then it, it started coming down toward the earth a little bit, um, and people started going, oh my God, it's the end of the world. Really? What happened? It danced around, came down, lasted about six minutes or seven minutes, and then it went back up in the sky. Are you for real? Yeah, because everybody who was there could witness it. The 100,000 people there, all of them, their clothes were completely wet and they were completely dry. Really? Yeah, they, they completely dry. The ground, which was completely muddy, ended up being dust. You got witnesses to that? Yes, there were witnesses who said that they saw all that. And even if it was just a matter of some people saying, wow, it's an amazing that the sun came out like that. No one had ever seen anything like that before. And so that was the, the, the miracle of uh, the miracle of the dancing sun on October 13th, 1917. Was anybody healed? Yes. On that day, there were people healed. And in the future, at Fatima, people were healed. Did people go back there? They sure did. Eugene, after Jacinta and Francisco died. Oh. I know children, right? Uh, Lucy went to a convent in Spain, so she went away, but people began to come there all the time to pray, to ask Our Lady to help them, and to honor Our Lady. Is it still continue? It still continues to this very day. That Fatima is a beautiful pilgrim site for uh, people to come. And so in Fatima today, on the 13th of the months of May, June, July, August, September, and October, you will always see people there, hundreds and thousands of people to pray. And even at other times? Yep, and even at other times. And one of the cool things is there are miracles there, but people go there to honor Our Lady. They don't just go for miracles? They go there to say thanks. I love you. Thank you for having our back. Wow. He, what do they do? Well, they usually wave a, like a white hanky at the mass. And so you see, you see tens of thousands of people praying and honoring Our Lady, and they have joy on their face. So they're not just demanding a miracle, because they know that she's with them. Oh, that's cool. Hey, um, did, did, did Francisco and Jacinta actually 
become saints? They actually became official saints. And they, those two little children were canonized by Pope Francis in 1917. Oh, so they're the youngest saints. Right, Dominic Savio, who we talked about in the past, was a teenage saint. He was very young. These two were even younger canonized saints. So that's a, a nice part of the story. What about Lucy? Did she do what she was supposed to do? She was a nun. She promoted devotion to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. She prayed for the world, and she died in 2005. But what about this business of secrets of Fatima? I was hoping you'd get to that, and I'll save it for the end. Look, what was the message of Fatima? Pray the Rosary. That was number one. Right, you got that. Pray the Rosary. What was number two? Well, um, my Immaculate Heart will triumph. So pray through the Immaculate Heart. Right, that was number two. And also to do the first Saturdays. Our Lady said, on the first Saturdays of those 13 months, you know, of the 13th of those months, make sure you, 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 you go to church and, and stay close to Our Lady and, and receive the sacraments. What else? What's the, what's the real secret of Fatima? Well, everybody was talking about secret, secret, secrets, right? That maybe Our Lady revealed stuff to the kids that, you know, was a, a special secret. Well, did she? she? I got exaggerated in my mind, but listen, the secrets were very simple. Number one, there is a hell and there is a purgatory, and the children saw what hell looks like, and we want to avoid hell. Is that good enough for you? I don't want to go to hell. Well, then we stay close to Jesus and Mary. Number two, Consecrate to the Immaculate Heart of Mary, especially for the conversion of Russia. Why was she so, um, kept talking about Russia? She did speak about Russia to the children. She said, Russia and, you know, that business of communism and, and all the evils of communism could be a ruin of the world. Yeah, I know. There's a lot of countries that pick that up, including the one that gave us the corona. Don't start you know, causing trouble. I'm just saying communism was an evil and she still called it out. And as a matter of fact, she said, consecrate the world uh, to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Was it consecrated? Four popes consecrated the world to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. And some people said it wasn't done completely. Well, Pope John Paul II said, I've done it completely. So that was finished. What was the third secret? This was interesting. People thought that the third secret was about the end of the world or the destruction of the church or something. But Pope John Paul II, again, during his lifetime, pretty much said, the third secret, my friends, was this. What? That the Pope would be shot. And after the Pope would be shot, he would be miraculously healed by Our Lady. And that the church would go forward but would have to be brave and continue the process of conversion so that Jesus would reign and Mother Mary could help us out. So the third secret was that Pope John Paul II was shot? That's what Lucy said from the convent eventually. And so John Paul II, after he was shot, he went back to Fatima and he put the bullet in the crown of the statue. She don't have a crown on there. I know, I didn't have the crown. You know, they, they put the crown on her in Fatima now. So now you know the whole story. The whole, whole story. Well, hmm, what else should I say? I don't know. I think uh, you should say this prayer to Our Lady, okay? Repeat after me. Our Lady of the Rosary. Our Lady of the Rosary. Ask your son Jesus to have mercy on us. Ask your son Jesus to have mercy on us. And to give us his peace. And to give us his peace. Help us to need to heed your warnings at Fatima. Help us to heed your warnings at Fatima. That we may be we may amend our lives. That we may amend our lives. And stop hurting God with our sins. And stop hurting God with our sins. Our Lady of Fatima, pray for us. 
Our Lady of the Rosary, pray for us. And Eugene, would you mind leading the audience in three Hail Marys? Because the Fatima message is, is beautiful, but it's a little tough. And I think that the world now with the coronavirus also, it's like it's, we, we want to stay joyful and everything, but we have to change our ways. And that was part of the Fatima message. It was like, come on now, straighten out, and I'll help you. She'll help us. Okay, everybody. Let's do the three Hail Marys. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Mary, help of Christians, pray for us. Our Lady of the Rosary, pray for us. Great job, Eugene. Stay close to Mary. She's so good. She's always with us. I promise you, I love her. And thank you, Mother Mary. Okay, everybody. Bye-bye. Anybody want to join the Rosary? We do it at 7.30 at night. So, stay tuned. Bye. Bye, Eugene. Good job. <laughs>